Dumbledore is plain and simple the most powerful wizard of all time. And not just strength wise, but he had the most powerful mind as well. Even as a kid, he excelled earning all sorts of awards and honors at Hogwarts. Then as an adult, he was part of many scholarly publications, he was credited for discovering the 12 uses of dragon's blood, he became chief warlock of the Wizengamot, he was supreme mugwump of the International Confederation of Wizards, he worked with Nicholas Flamel to make groundbreaking discoveries on alchemy, and he defeated the tyrant Geller Grindelwald single-handedly when the entire ministry and orders could not even get close to doing so. So with all of these accomplishments, why didn't the greatest wizard to ever live become Minister of Magic? Well, in this video, I'm going to answer that very question. Before we start though, I want to thank today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a virtual private network or a VPN that is extremely easy to use. But at this point, I'm sure most of you know what a VPN is. So instead, I'm going to go over the best feature that Surfshark has to offer. Do you ever get that message that says this content is not available in your country? Well, now you don't have to worry about that because with Surfshark, you can watch anything from any country. With Surfshark, you can change your location and access content from other countries that aren't available in your own. And you can use this for all different streaming services. That was bloody brilliant. Just this week, I was able to watch a bunch of things that weren't available in the US. Most notably, Fantastic Beasts, which I know a huge number of you would love to be able to watch on your Netflix. And if you run out of things to watch in your own country, you can unlock the 15 largest Netflix libraries from all over the world. You can use the promo code MOVIEFLAME and click the link below. Using this code, you get 83% off, which unlocks the best price in the market. And for the Black Friday sale, you can get a whopping 4 months free. You also get a 30 day money back guarantee. It's a great deal, so if you're at all interested, check it out. There's no risk and will greatly help support the channel. Now, let's get the video started. Going over Dumbledore's accomplishments and seeing as he was the single most powerful wizard of all time, it's crazy that he never took on the job of Minister of Magic, and even more wild that he instead limited himself to simply running a school. To really understand the topic of this video, let's start by going over Dumbledore's history with the Ministry of Magic itself. Dumbledore not taking office had nothing to do with a lack of support. Following his duel with Grindelwald, a duel that would later be dubbed the greatest duel in history, the people were clamoring for Dumbledore to take on a lead role. Normally, the minister is democratically elected, but the people wanted Dumbledore so badly that they skipped the voting and just offered him the position. And not just once, but several times. However, he refused. Instead, Dumbledore continued to work at Hogwarts, eventually taking on the role of headmaster. He will be under the finest headmaster that Hogwarts has ever seen, Albus Dumbledore. Not long after that, a former student of Dumbledore named Tom Riddle, aka Lord Voldemort, began his crusade, being the new tyrant who took the place of Geller Grindelwald, though maybe even more powerful. The current Minister of Magic was a witch named Eugenia Jenkins, and she was soon ousted from office because she was unable to contain Voldemort's threat. Both the public and those in the ministry begged Dumbledore to come into office, but again, he refused. He instead put his time and energy into the Order of the Phoenix, which in all honesty was much more effective than the ministry ever was against the Dark Lord. Harold Mincham took the position of minister instead, and though he did some good things like putting more Dementors around Azkaban to make it more secure, he too was unable to contain what looked like Voldemort's unstoppable rise to power. Millicent Bagnall took office instead, and about a year into her term, Voldemort was taken down when he tried to go after Harry Potter. But nobody lived once he decided to kill him. Nobody, not one, except you. Bagnold worked closely with Barty Crouch Sr., who had asserted himself in the ministry as very capable and strong. He led the hunt as they brought in the remaining Death Eaters after Voldemort's downfall, and for the first time, the public wasn't unanimously in favor of Dumbledore taking office, as half the Wizarding World wanted Crouch instead. Though this could partially be because the public was frustrated with Dumbledore for turning down the job so many times. However, after Crouch's reputation was tarnished when his son was brought before him as a Death Eater and Crouch locked his own son up when many thought he was innocent, once again, Dumbledore became the favorite for the job. But once again, he turned the position down. So Cornelius Fudge took office instead. Fudge was not the best minister of magic, and he wrote to Dumbledore constantly to get advice on what to do. Behind most of Fudge's accomplishments was Dumbledore in the background helping him. 
Fudge knew full well that the people preferred Dumbledore over him. This eventually led to him getting jealous of Dumbledore, and when they had a falling out at the end of the Goblet of Fire, Fudge did everything he could to tarnish Dumbledore's reputation. He removed him as Chief Warlock of the Wizengamot, and removed him as Supreme Mugwump of the International Confederation of Wizards, and on top of that, branded Dumbledore as a liar in the press to make everything he said be disregarded by the public. The Minister thinks Dumbledore's after his job. But that's insane. No one in their right mind could believe that Dumbledore... Exactly the point. Fudge isn't in his right mind. It's been twisted and warped, I fear. This backfired on Fudge, though, when it turned out he was wrong and he was forced out of office. He's back! Dumbledore's relationship with Fudge made him even more distant from the Ministry than he already was. And when Rufus Scrimger became the new Minister, he and Dumbledore had some beef as well, mostly regarding Harry. So now that we've gone over Dumbledore's history with the Ministry of Magic, let's focus on the title of this video. Why Dumbledore Never Became Minister of Magic? Well, the answer to that is housed in one summer when Dumbledore was very young. After finishing up at Hogwarts, a young Albus Dumbledore met a young Geller Grindelwald, who I mentioned earlier in the video being the tyrant Dumbledore took down. They were drawn together by one thing, the Deathly Hallows. They were two clever, arrogant boys with a shared obsession. As they went after the Hallows, Dumbledore loved the idea of taking over the Wizarding World together. He later said, Grindelwald, you cannot imagine how his ideas caught me, Harry, inflamed me. Muggles forced into subservience, we wizards triumphant, Grindelwald and I, the glorious young leaders of the revolution. Dumbledore told himself that it would be for the greater good, and any harm done would be repaid a hundredfold in benefits for wizards. They were driven to become tyrants with the thought of possessing the three Deathly Hallows and becoming the masters of death. The Elder Wand, the weapon that would lead them to power. The Resurrection Stone. For Albus, it meant bringing his parents back from the dead so he could leave his siblings behind with them. And for Grindelwald, it meant making an army of Inferi, which Dumbledore was fully aware of but did nothing to convince him otherwise. And the Cloak of Invisibility, something they could use to protect and shield those that stood in their corner. For Albus, it meant hiding his unstable little sister Ariana. But more than anything, it was the final piece to make them the Masters of Death. They planned for two months, plotting every detail of taking over the world, taking muggles down and putting them in what they thought was the rightful place below wizards, and overthrowing the Ministry of Magic to become tyrants, re-establishing wizards as the rulers of the world. However, Dumbledore was snapped out of this cruel fantasy when a fight broke out between himself, Grindelwald, and his brother Aberforth, the result of which led to Ariana's death. They never knew whose spell hit her and killed her, and Dumbledore knew it very well could have been him that took the life of his only sister. Following this, Dumbledore discovered what is perhaps his biggest flaw. He craved power. Dumbledore promised himself that he would never let this flaw take him over again, so to counter that, he limited himself to working at Hogwarts. He refused the job of Minister of Magic because he knew he could not handle that kind of power. Over and over again, he was asked, and to be honest, his craving of power probably made him want to take the job, but his good senses took over and he knew he could not take on such a powerful role. He later told Harry, I meanwhile was offered the job of Minister of Magic, not once, but several times. Naturally, I refused. I had learned that I was not to be trusted with power. I had proven as a very young man that power was my weakness and my temptation. It was a curious thing, Harry, but perhaps those who are best suited to power are those who have never sought it. Those who, like you, have leadership thrust upon them and take up the mantle because they must and find to their own surprise that they wear it well. I was safer at Hogwarts. Interestingly, he was drawn to both Harry and Newt Scamander for their genuine goodness, both being able to resist the temptation of power. Do you know why I admire you, Newt? More perhaps than any man I know. You do not seek power. They both proved themselves to be more qualified than Dumbledore in that regard, all because of their lack of lust for power. This was something Dumbledore was never able to conquer in life, as power always came knocking. He took the Elder Wand from Grindelwald after their duel because he simply couldn't refuse it. And even years later, he asked James Potter if he could examine his invisibility cloak, hoping it was the Deathly Hallows that he had been chasing all those years ago. And most of all, his craving of power led to his death. He found Voldemort's ring Horcrux, and when he realized it housed the Resurrection Stone, he put it on, so blinded by greed and power that he did not think it through. There was of course a curse that Voldemort put on the ring, and had it not been for Snape who contained the curse to only his hand, he would have died that very night. Instead, he had only a year to live, which made him push forward the plan with Snape. 
You must be the one to kill me, Severus. It is the only way. Once again, we see how his craving of power caused a death. Only this time, it was his own death rather than his little sister's. In the beginning of the series, Dumbledore is painted as this perfect character. But as the series goes on, we see that he has flaws just like every other character, and perhaps even more demons than most in the series. His lust for power made him refuse the Minister of Magic job over and over again, because he knew he could not be trusted in such a powerful role. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.